If you've ever wanted to centralize user accounts, backups, and file storage and more on your home network, then perhaps you've considered taking an old computer and setting it up as a home network server. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Windows-based server to serve websites, store backups, store files, and become a primary domain controller. Now, the first considerations you should make is towards the actual hardware that your server is going to be running on. Now, because the server doesn't have to be running any intense applications, uh, it doesn't need to be designed to be a high-end gaming rig. A dual-core, 1 GHz processor or more should be sufficient uh, for use in a home server. In terms of RAM, I find that 2 GB is fine for use in my server at home. Now, the last thing you'll want to consider is the power consumption of your server. Because a server runs 24-7, you'll want something that has a fairly low power consumption in order to save electricity. Um, for my server at home, I'm using an ultra-compact Acer Aspire Revo computer. Uh, this computer boasts a 1.66 GHz quad-core processor, 2 GB of RAM, and a base-level hard drive of 120 GB. Now, I upgraded that hard drive to 500 GB just so I'd have more room to store files. Uh, the best part about this computer, however, is that when it's running full tilt, it still consumes less than 30 watts of power. Alright, so once you've selected your hardware, it's time to put some consideration towards what operating system you're going to use. Many people elect to use Linux for their home servers simply because it's a cheap alternative to Windows. However, in this guide, I'm going to be explaining how to configure a Windows 2008 or Windows 2003 server. Uh, the good news is that if you're a student, Microsoft actually offers uh, three different server editions available at no charge just head on over to dreamspark.com and check out the Microsoft DreamSpark program. Once you've obtained and installed your operating system, it's time to actually set it up to do the things that you want. Uh, the most basic function that any server can fulfill is that of a file server. Um, you will want to install the file server role, uh, which allows easy and customizable sharing options over a local area network. Uh, so to do this, what you want to do is you want to go to the server manager in the start menu and click on the roles tab. Click on Add New and select the File Services role. Uh, you can also install the Windows Search Services from this window as well. Now, Windows Search Service just makes it a lot easier to find files that are maybe buried somewhere on your hard drive. Now, to make a folder available over the network, uh, you want to right-click on the folder that you want to share and select Properties. Go to the Sharing tab and click on Share. Then you can choose which users have access to the folder. Now, if you want anybody on your local area network to be able to access the folder, just set the permissions to everyone. Another basic task that a server can perform is that of a web server. Imagine being able to host a virtually limitless number of websites all from your home internet connection. Microsoft actually has their own web server that they've built into each and every edition of Windows. Uh, the server is called IIS, or Internet Information Services, and it is easily customizable using a GUI. You can install IIS by going to the Server Manager and clicking on Roles. Select Add and choose Web Server. When prompted to customize the role, you may want to install ASP and or CGI scripts uh, if you want to be able to use web, web languages such as PHP or ASP. Another feature you might want to consider installing is the FTP service. FTP is an easy way to send files to and from your server uh, across the internet. Now, once you've installed IIS, you can go to the IIS Management Console from the Start menu. Uh, once you've launched that, expand the name of your computer and expand the folder called Sites. Uh, if you want, you can remove the default site or you can keep it there. Uh, to add websites, just right-click and select Add. Name your website and browse to the physical location of the files on your computer. If you have just one site, you can leave the host name box blank. However, if you're planning on hosting multiple separate websites, you'll want to fill this in with the domain name of the website you're going to be using. In my case, ve7alb.net resolves to my primary site, whereas if somebody types in mikhail.ve7alb.net, that will resolve to a completely separate site. You can also change the name of the default document by clicking on the default document button in the console. As you can see, I've made my default document index.php. 
Adding an FTP site is very similar to adding a traditional website. Um, if you're using Windows Server 2008 R2, you'll just want to right click and click on Add FTP Site. If you're using a previous version of IIS, such as the one included with Windows 2008 or Windows 2003, you will have to use the IIS 6.0 Management Console. Um, however, Windows does run you through the prompts on how to set that up. Now the final task I'm going to explain is how to set up your own domain controller. Uh, people who work in offices or go to school are probably very familiar with domain computers. Um, a domain computer usually prompts for a control alt delete before you can log in and when you do log in the login request is actually handled by the server rather than by the local computer. Uh, this means that you can have user accounts that are the same across multiple computers. So it's especially useful if you have several people who are going to be logging in to several different computers in your home. In order to configure your server as a domain controller, you'll need to install Active Directory. Active Directory can be installed, as with all the other things we've gone through today, from the Server Manager's Roles window. Once you've installed the role, you need to configure it. Open up Server Manager and go to Roles, then select Active Directory Domain Services. Click on the Run Active Directory Domain Services link and follow the first few prompts. Next, you'll want to tell the wizard to create a new domain in a new forest. Enter a localized domain name for your network that's not going to interfere with any internet-based uh, domain names. And on my case, I used ve7alb.local. Make the server and domain functional level at Windows 2003, unless you plan on having computers that are running older operating systems on your network. When the wizard prompts for additional components, make sure that you ensure the domain server icon is checked. Keep the default options for your database folder and type an administrator password. After that, you just have to sit back and wait for Windows to do its thing. After the install finishes, reboot the server just to be on the safe side and ensure that all the settings have applied. Now, once you've configured your Active Directory, you're going to want to add users. To add users to Active Directory, um, you want to click on the Active Directory Users and Computers shortcut in the Start menu. Uh, click on that and launch it. Uh, Right-click in any empty space and select New User. Define a full name and a logon name for the user and assign a password. Now you're going to want to repeat this procedure for as many different user accounts as you want on the network. Finally, to add client computers to the domain, um, you're going to want to make sure that the DNS settings, uh, which can be found by bringing up the Properties dialog for your local network adapter, um, is set to the IP address of your home server. In my case, the IP address of my server is 192.168.1.6, so I want to make sure that Windows is using 192.168.1.6 as a DNS server. Uh, next, you're going to want to bring up the Computer Properties window and click on the Change Settings under Computer Name. Now, there'll be two options. The easy way to do it is to click on the Network Name button, which will bring up a wizard that'll prompt you to enter your, user, your domain username your domain password, and the domain. If it asks you to provide access to an, an account that has permission to add computers to the domain, use the username and password for the administrator account on your server. In conclusion, in this guide I've shown you how to configure HTTP, basic FTP, Active Directory services, and file services on a Windows-based server. If you followed this guide thus far, then you're well on your way to becoming your own networking guru. For Tech Report, this is Christopher, reporting.